Yeah, yeah, check one, two, check one, two. Is this mic on? Is this mic on? Hey, listen, man. It's the one and only trend set of DJ Sense, and you're listening to Cocktails. Dirty Discussions with Kiki and Medina Monroe. Yeah. Today's cocktail is called In Heat. The ingredients you need are three blackberries, one lime wedge, one cup of ice, one and a half ounces of reposado tequila, but you know, I'm going to use Casamigos, three fourth ounces of fresh lime juice, three fourth ounces of simple syrup, a half ounce of Chambord, and one ounce of chilled club soda. So this is how you're going to make it. You are going to skewer one blackberry and the lime wheel on a pick. In a cocktail shaker, muddle the remaining two blackberries. Add the ice, the tequila, the lime juice, the simple syrup, and the shamboard. Shake well and pour into a rocks glass. Stir in the club soda and garnish with the skewered black, the skewered blackberry and lime wheel. In heat. This drink got me in heat. Oh, <laughs> What's Not up, Kiki? Um, not too much. I'm feeling very solemn this week. You sound very somber. Mm-hmm. Does your throat hurt? Mm-hmm. Are you just going through the process? Just the process. Okay. But, you know, um, I'm excited for this weekend. I keep trying to look at the rainbow mm-hmm. at the end of the tunnel. I am going out of town this weekend. I'll be in Dallas mm-hmm. um, with my friends this weekend. So I'm just trying to look forward to that because okay. the other stuff is, like, fucking sad. Well, What's going on with prayers. you? Thank you. You're welcome, girl. How was the wedding? Kiki, let me just tell you. At first, y'all know I was on here complaining. I was like, mm-hmm. I'm not being in no more weddings. I'm about to have a whole. You were stressed the fuck out. I was stressed. Out. I was looking crazy. I was like, and granted, the first day that I got into Oklahoma City, everything was going wrong that could go wrong for this wedding. I didn't get to shower for two days. I didn't get to brush my teeth. You for didn't two get days. to shower. I was scared to ask teeth? my sister, "Can I shower and can I brush my teeth?" Because as soon as I got there, we were like, boom, on the go, on the go. You need those little wispies. I need them little wispies. The bitch was really walking around with hot breath. Like that would never happen. <laughs> It happened. <laughs> I'm taking a break. But this wedding was literally the best wedding I've ever been to. And I'm not just saying that because it's my sister. Other people were saying it. Like when they left, everyone was like, can the party continue? It, we were like, well, it's over. She had it at this barn. And when you hear that, you're like a barn. It <laughs> yeah. was the most romantic setting I've ever seen. The dinner tables were set like Jesus himself had been invited to the wedding. Okay. It was incredible. There were black ponies. There were, it was a Did real- Did y'all get to ride them? No, they were, oh. they were little miniature horses actually. Oh, okay. They're little miniature horses. They just came, they were just involved because her theme was a Disney love story. Oh, uh, gotcha. She, she came down to a whole new world. Um, everything was just the detail, luxuries in the detail. And they were my parents and my sister and everything that they spent money on. They just made sure they paid attention to the detail. Obviously, mm-hmm. it wasn't a million dollar wedding, but it looked like it. Mm-hmm. They had things for people to do at every moment. There was a caricature station. It was oh, like Disney cool. World. There was a little Volkswagen van that was a photo booth inside so everybody could crawl inside and take pictures. There was other little different photo booth stations. Everything had a touch of Disney to it. There were fireworks. Afterwards, Aww. he lo- Kenny loves like sports cars so they drove away into the night with like on this really in this really nice sports car. It was mm-hmm. incredible. It was so incredible. Like it was just love. I was crying. I was doing the ugly cry. Aww. It was an amazing loving weekend that I needed. I love crying at weddings. I, I mean, I don't it. go to weddings very often, but I always cry. Yeah. It's just such a beautiful thing. Like to see two people who are in love and committing yeah. to each other. It's just like, wow. Wow. This is so nice. Maybe one day. <laughs> or maybe not. But yeah, what else did you do? Girl, wedding shit. I just got back. That was today? all I did was I got back late, late, late last night. It might as well have oh. been today. Okay, well, glad you got back safe. Glad it's over. You can move on. And uh, you won't be so stressed out because nope. you have been stressed out for like a year. Girl. <laughs> Almost. Okay. So today we do have a guest. But before we get to our guest, I am going to tell you guys uh, the weird sex story of the week. You said a man is not a necessity. A man is a luxury. Like dessert. <laughs> yeah. A man is absolutely not a necessity. Or did you mean that to sound mean and bitter? Oh, not at all. I adore dessert. I love men. I think men are the coolest. But you don't really need them to live. So I was going to do this one story about some pedophile. This is another pedophile. 
saw the story today and I was like, is this true? I kept seeing headlines that there was this man who um, had been having unprotected sex with all of these women and had tried to infect over 600 women with HIV. So I was like, is this real or is this one of those hoax things? No, it's real. So basically this man, he's a DJ in South Carolina. Um, his name is Jason Roger Pope. He was arrested back in August, but I'm just finding out about this story on three counts of trafficking in persons, three counts of first degree criminal sexual misconduct um, or sexual conduct and one count each of second degree criminal sexual conduct with a minor promoting prostitution of a minor and kidnapping. So basically what this this man was HIV positive. Or is HIV positive because he's still with us. But he had been having sex with all of these different women in South Carolina. He's in Florence, South Carolina, but he was going in different places. He was like a popular DJ out there. And he was just having unprotected sex with all these girls, grown women, young girls. And one of his neighbors spoke out and was like, you know, I knew something was up. I didn't know it was that. But I knew something was up because I noticed there were a lot of young girls in and out of his house. But when they would go over there... I wouldn't see him for a few days. Then I would see him again or I'd never see them again. And it was just weird. And so this man, um, how old is he? He's 42. The girls um, from the reports, they were as young as 13 years old. He was having sex with them. And then the whole count of 600 and some women came from his Facebook post. So he posted all of these pictures with these underage girls, grown women, like in compromising positions. positions. Were people liking the pictures? Like That part, I don't know. Um, I didn't see the likes. I just saw the photos. But he's in the photos. His face is clearly there. They covered the victim's photos, of course. And it's just so many different women and he was just like you know my hope and these are according to his Facebook statuses my hope is that I have sex with these black girls because he was only having sex with black girls this white guy Um, I hope that I have unprotected sex with them they're fast they're hot and then they'll go and have sex with other people and they'll continue to infect more people he was white Mm mm-hmm Ooh, that's yeah, not, it's so better sad. Stop going to Myrtle Beach. No more Myrtle Beach. <laughs> and y'all better start using protection because people are out here. You don't know who has it, and you got to remember that everything doesn't look like something. It doesn't smell like something. You don't always feel nothing after it's over. So I know we can all be risky, but you got to think about it because that could be any of us you know always be trying to do the black girls wrong now y'all trying to infect us that's always it's not but yeah that's what happens so he is um last i checked from the news articles i read he's awaiting trial um but there's a lot of uh, more details that keep coming out so i'm gonna keep an eye on this case Mm. because it's just disgusting he's a horrible horrible person but Mm. that's it for weird sex if y'all see any more stories send them to me um just dm them to me on instagram or email them to me at key uh at info at kiki said so.com and so this week we have a special guest from the honey pot if you've never heard of it you need to get with the program we have miss beatrice dixon how are you i'm good how are you i'm good first of all i feel like i'm a stan right now i'm a stan i Kiki, I almost brought my honeypot soap bottle for her to sign and I left it on the kitchen countertop. <laughs> Probably Anything. because God was like, bitch, relax. You're going to scare her. her. No. <laughs> Unnecessary. Yeah, I found Thank out about you. your products a long time ago, so I was so excited when your people reached out to us to have you come on the show. I was like, oh, this will be good. We can talk about hygiene. Like, we've talked about hygiene before, but we don't really know. We're just giving our own tips <laughs> and our own know. struggle. You know how to take care of yourself. Yeah, some stuff. Yeah, but, but then you really I was, know because you made a multi-million dollar company out of taking care of vaginas. I did. Thank you. Before we get into that, we're going to play a game. We like to loosen our guests up a little bit. If you don't drink, then you'll play a game and, you know, loosen up a little bit. You don't I'm drink for it. Are I you drinking drink. water? Not you know today. what? Oh, you're you know on what? your good stuff. You know what? <laughs> Just make me a drink. Yes. yes. Perfect. There's the okay. Last of it. So um, my first Thank one, you. I'm going to take some of yours. Um, foreplay or get right to it. Oh, which one is the this and which one is the that? That's the this and the that. You can like say you which say. one. You don't have to say this or that. Oh, because you never know. It depends. You know, on I mean that that's like some yeah, like yeah. But I like foreplay though because I'm nasty. What kind of foreplay? Every type. Oh, 
I'm the same way. Even if it's like hot and heavy, I'll be like, <laughs> it doesn't. Let's, go on, let's just like. Do and a there's little. no like body parts that are like off limits. I oh like extended like all day foreplay. Like maybe start with some text, some pictures. Oh yeah, some videos. Yeah. And when I see you, then it can intensify. Oh yeah, yeah, I yeah, love yeah. absolutely. Too. Yeah, I all of that's foreplay. all of that's included. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was working on my nudes this weekend. Okay, oh, your turn. Okay. Bitch. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Long, deep strokes or fast, short strokes? Long, deep strokes. Long, deep. I'm a long, deep stroker, yeah. too. What about yeah. you? Yeah, long, deep strokes. Long, if I like you. If I don't like you and you just cute, short, fast ones. Yeah. Okay. So Let's you get, get out of here so, yeah, right, see, so I, I can leave. With the short, fast but ones, I, but you know, I, feel I can't. Maybe they're not necessarily short, but they're just fast. But I like it. I like the sound effects. Yeah, smacking. It's a it's a lot more than the slow deep strokes. I don't really yeah. hear that sound. I like that's the like a beautiful sound. Sex has such a beautiful sound, right? Because when it's, it's like so wet sounds. and it's like except for queefing, I really hate when you get up and you're going to wipers and you're like, <laughs> and you're like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Like it's just weird. That's a good sign. Yeah, that shows that you like the long. They never, that they shows never that mind. you like the long deep strokes. It's just that's awkward why you're though. Queefing. Everybody's just looking like. <laughs> Did you fart, bitch? Or what was it? <laughs> okay. If Instagram. he's grown, he shouldn't. It shouldn't even matter. You're right. It shouldn't. It shouldn't even matter. Okay. Instagram or Twitter? Neither. Really? I Are you like an anti-social media person? I don't have it on my phone. What? You yeah. you're just not into social media. Like you don't have a. Obviously, you have one for your company, but you don't I have, have a one. You're just not on it often. I'm I'm fortunate. I have a really great team. Wow. Mm-hmm. I wish I could be that person. <laughs> I read I like my horoscope today and it said it. my horoscope verbatim said I need to take a break from Instagram. <laughs> what? It said it. Where did you where do you get your horoscope? I don't be telling people because everybody always asks because they're so on point. I don't say where I get them from. But what? that bitch said, bitch, get off Instagram. <laughs> you just gonna hold out the good stuff? <laughs> that what, is so selfish. And I was like, dang, I just uh, ignored it. I was like, they don't never be on point. Uh, uh, they be on point all the time i just need to take a break okay buddy okay do you prefer would you prefer a bacterial infection or a yeast infection yeast Mm. yeast infection i mean of of course bitch i would prefer neither of them (laughs) right if i had to choose one i would take a yeast infection all day why you just hurt so bad they hurt because i think about the itching i've had a yeast infection that shit is some bullshit they don't they don't stink and I know how to get rid of a yeast infection. It still infection, smells like a bread factory. But it don't smell like collard greens. <laughs> no, I think that that much is true. smell like chops, bitch. sewer. <laughs> that actually smells like sewage. Like, like, what the fuck is going on? Once, in the, one time I got a yeast infection, I was a grown-ass woman. I didn't know what was going on. Mm-hmm. I was at home. I was living with my parents at the time. I called my mom. I was crying. I said, Mom, when you get back, can you please look at my vagina? She was what? like, what? <laughs> I didn't know. I thought I had an STD. And I was really, you know when you have a yeast infection, you really be like rubbing it like, <laughs> what? what? Why does it, it feel like this? You be rubbing on your jeans, trying to hump your jeans. I caught. I was like, "Mom." She was like, "Dude, you're grown. We're not supposed to, you know, not to be doing this." Oh, right? She did. She like, like she like, we're both she, grown." I don't. She was like, "It's just a yeast." I'm really a grown ass woman laying in the bathtub with my legs spread and my mom's looking in the at my bathtub. vagina. It was just a yeast infection. And what did she say? She was like, "It's a yeast infection." She didn't even need to go. I was like, "Mom, do you need to look deep? You need to spread." She was like, "It's a yeast infection. I've seen them. It's, it's, I it's had gonna be fine. You're good." I was like, "Okay." It's not gonna fall. Girl. <laughs> okay. Texting or conversations on the phone? Oh, texting. I like texting too. Really? Yeah. I, I don't really. Combos. Yeah. It's just, let's talk when we got some shit to say. Okay. Because mm-hmm. with texting, I can just like say what I need to say. What you got to say. Great. Because once we have enough time to talk on the phone, I'd rather see you in person. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like I like the short convos. And like if you we're both busy, then it's like, okay, it might take me a couple of hours to get to you because I'm doing other stuff, but I can get back to you and then you can get back to me and whatever. It's all cool. But if we got two hours and we're in the same city, let's meet up. Go have a drink. Go eat something. Right. Yeah. No, I definitely or, prefer texting. You know, yeah. Absolutely. A big wedding or a courthouse wedding and then a reception? In real life? In real life. No fucking wedding. What? I'm never getting married again. Why? Ever. <laughs> you meant, you meant that. Sis, look at Did you have eyes. a big wedding before? No, I had oh. a courthouse wedding. Mm-hmm. But I will never do that shit again. Wow. Ever. Yeah. 
But so. what if you meet someone and you fall in love? You can just then, be well, then let's friends. be in love, baby. Okay. <laughs> that shit don't require <laughs> a piece of paper in a courthouse. And if I want to leave or if you want to leave, I got to go ask. Got, I, first of all, I got to pay some fucking attorney. Might be a, now it's gonna be a lot, if, a lot of money. If Ooh, yeah. exactly, you got real assets. <laughs> now exactly. I know what you had before. Real, you exactly. Wow. But first of all, if it was to ever happen, there's a prenup. Yeah, wow. I would there's be no, Oprah Winfrey too. There's no way. Too, yeah. If I had a million dollar company, I, it's not honestly. <laughs> it's not even about the money. It's not about the money. It's about my choice. Mm-hmm. You know, I I, I cannot be pigeonholed to staying because of something that we can't control Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we can control what we want what we don't want right so Mm -hmm. if i can control that shit i know what i want i know what i don't want i should be able to say this is not what i want and i need to leave Mm -hmm. right when i can't do that or when you can't do that if we're not able to do this thing naturally without paperwork if it's not organic if it doesn't flow if it's not easy what are we doing what the fuck are we doing Mm -hmm. right so that's the part of marriage that gets scary and marriage is a made-up thing so yeah you know it's 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 marketing it's beautiful trying to come up in the world it's it's beautiful (laughs) if you if that's what you want Mm -hmm. in my book you're good on it so good on it. Hey, girl. Look, you you learned. Mm-hmm. That's okay. all you can do. So the honey pot. Yes. How did you come up with this idea? I to start this company? <clears throat> I had bacterial vaginosis for almost eight months. Actually, for eight months, it's probably almost consecutively. Nine Not consecutively. It uh-huh. would. It's just like everybody else's. You go to the doctor, they give you, you that get little the medicine, thing. you get the flagell, or you get the gel, or you get the metronidazole, or whatever it is that they're going to give you. And then you go home and you take it, and then you get your period. And now, or you have sex, or you have sex, but typically you've gotten your period, right? Mm-hmm. And when you get your period, guess what happens? Because your pH doesn't get back to where it needs to get to. Now you've got bacterial vaginosis. So it would be like on again, off again, on again, off again. And Were you sad? Mm. Yeah, because if you're, you know, think about it. I mean, your root, think about how much you you use your vagina a lot every day, right? Uh-huh. You, go, you urinate, you mm. wash yourself, you might masturbate, you might, might sex, you know, whatever, <laughs> right? You're doing your 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 kegels i'm doing them right now you understand yeah. what i'm saying pop your like, kegel balls in whatever you you know whatever you do it's a meaningful part of your body i mean it is like why heart. it's why humans are even here it's because of pussy mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. understand what i'm saying and so yes <laughs> bitch yes it's i rough. cried and it's rough and i put all kinds of things in my vagina to try to get rid of it uh-huh. and it was awful would you, you know? put in there to try to get rid of it? I did all kinds of shit. I did garlic cloves. Mm-hmm. I would like make little yogurt tampon situations. Um, I use, I would do douches of like hydrogen peroxide and water. I would, I mean, I did everything you can imagine. Mm-hmm. You know, I would, I would use the terrible, awful shit that you shouldn't use, mm-hmm. but you got to have sex. So you, you know, you can't <laughs> be out here with a with stank st- push. And you, stank, and, with a stank and, push and, and that's not, not even okay. just you gotta have sex when you go to the bathroom and you get beat and you have beat that's no, when the, it's, the it's smell disgusting. just be like bloop, bloop, bloop. like it just like <laughs> takes over the air and you're like wow my vagina really smells like a whole sewage <laughs> And a dead body, a mortuary. Like yeah. it is. All I've had BV a lot. I feel like when that. I feel like that's why I connect so well with your product because mm-hmm. there was a port, a part in my, a point in my life where I was getting it so often, way longer than eight months. And even every now and again, I get it. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I became vegan at one point because I was like, maybe it's what I'm putting into my body. Yeah. Like your story, <laughs> like really has resonated with me and a lot of women. And people don't want to admit it because the shit is embarrassing. Yeah. So. The embarrassment that comes along with it. Were you ever scared to really be like, look, no, no. I mean, well, maybe I was, you know, the thing that sucks is that um, women are meant to feel a lot of shame. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate because we diseases and infections and things like that 
don't show up for men the way that they show up for women. Exactly. Right. So it should be it should be more sympathetic or empathetic. Right. That women have these issues. A man will never have these fucking issues. Right. Like, let's just say, make it what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, all kinds of things naturally happen, which are beautiful things. But still. So. You know, so, yeah, I was I felt ashamed. You go to the doctor, you feel shame. Uh, you feel ashamed with yourself because you because you're like, why can't I figure this out? I'm not mm-hmm. nasty, but you feel nasty. You feel you just dirty. Feel, you imagine. feel dirty. Yeah. And it sucks that that are that we've been conditioned to allow something that we can't control. Right. Or that we haven't understood what we, that we could control, that we would be made to allow ourselves to feel that way Mm -hmm. it's despicable um you know but i but honestly i wouldn't take it back because if i didn't have all the problems that i've had with my vagina then maybe we wouldn't be sitting here you know so i have a question yeah when you the first time you had bv how did you know you had it was it the smell or was it something else because i know that sometimes the smell is like a telltale sign Mm -hmm. but you can have a smell and it could be something else no, you can't. I think for me it was a smell and I think it was um it was the discharge that came with it. What was the discharge like? It was kind of like a milky white and it and it stunk, mm. you know? Mm-hmm. And I just knew that that couldn't be right. Um, right. You know, I was living my life so like it should it could have been an STD. I didn't know, you know. Mm-hmm. Um and I just I went to the doctor and they told me that I had BV and then I just you know, it just became this perpetual thing, um, you know, but but again, I'm very happy that I had that bout and that I went through all those things because, you know, that's why we're able to sit here and have this conversation. Yeah. You so, got successful off of having a stanky pussy. Yeah, <laughs> Congratulations. We, we right? did. Because most people it's not just hide in shame. Yeah. No, nah, but, you know, and we sh- and honestly, anybody that's listening and to everybody in this room one thing that we should do better about is feeling shame. We make ourselves suffer for no reason. If you've got a problem, just figure out how to fix it. There's Mm -hmm. nothing wrong with you. Mm -hmm. Everybody's out here fucking right. Everybody's going to get some sort of an infection. Everybody's probably going to get for the most part, chlamydia or gonorrhea or something at some point in their life, whether they're going to admit to it or not. Mm -hmm. Even if you had AIDS or HIV or whatever you got, Right. It doesn't matter at this point. If you got it, you got it. You got it. Manage it. Take care of it. Manage it. Get rid of it. it. Get rid of it if you can. Exactly. But don't. But don't. But don't feel shame Mm -hmm. because that's a choice. You don't Mm -hmm. have to do that. You know. How did you come up with the name Honey Pot? Riding down the street, a band poster. Band was called Honey Pot Band, and I was like, huh. That's a cute name. I think I'm going to call my company Honey Pot. That's so cute. Yeah. Honey Pot. Not a special story. <laughs> so how much work did you have to put into coming up with the formula for like the wash specifically? Because that's the first thing of yours that I tried. And can you tell us the real work? Don't give us like this story of just like, in, unless it is just like, oh, I'll put some garlic, mashed it, put the coconut oil and it just no, worked. No, I had a dream with an ancestor. Mm-hmm. Who gave did you know the ancestor? I didn't. Um... But I, I did not have a drink. I did not know the ancestor, mm-hmm. but um, I explained it to my mom and she said who it could have been. But mm-hmm. who it doesn't, you know, at this point, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I had a dream with an ancestor and she was she we were just sitting at a table and she said that she knew that I was dealing with the infections and that she knew how to get rid of it. Mm-hmm. And she handed me a piece of paper and it had all these ingredients on it. And she said, you know, and I'm thinking in my mind, in my in the dream, I'm thinking, how the hell am I going to remember this? Mm -hmm. Because it was almost like I knew that I was dreaming. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. And she said, don't worry about it. I'm going to make sure you remember. And when I woke up, I remembered and I wrote it down and I told my mommy about it and I just made it. You know, I well, just, what do you mean you just made it? Like, so you, you remember the dream, you wrote it down. You got a good ass brain. So, cause I, my dreams, I feel like I wouldn't remember it, but so you wrote it down and then you went, got all the ingredients, blended it up. And then were you just like gooping it into your, were you laying in the tub and you just no. gooped it in? No, because it wasn't something that I put in. It was literally just the wash. Cause 
Like it was just a feminine wash and anything that you put on your body, mm-hmm. you know, your skin is your skin is the largest organ that you have. So you could put some lavender on your arm right now mm-hmm. and then go get your blood test in an hour from now and lavender would show up in your blood. Mm-hmm. Right. So especially with your vagina, because it's a mucous membrane. So it's very, 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 very porous. You know, it's an opening to your body. So anything that you put on it goes in it. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh, so you didn't even like put it on your vagina. You just put it on your skin. I put it. I washed my vulva, my labia. Mm-hmm. I washed I washed my vagina the way you washed your vagina. And was it soapy already? It was soapy. Mm-hmm. What are all the ingredients? Uh, Coconut oil. It's like a, a, a refractionated coconut oil, which mm-hmm. is how it's saponified. Mm-hmm. Um, rose, hydrosol, lavender hydrosol garlic, mm-hmm. grapefruit seed extract, lavender essential oil, um, apple cider vinegar. Uh, we use hydrogen peroxide. Very easy ingredients. And did mm-hmm. you put it in a blender? No, I put it in like a I put it in like a container, like a pitcher, mm-hmm. like that you drink out of. Yeah. But I but I, what I should say though is that I had ten years of experience in pharmacy. So I you know, and I, I did. Was wondering that. I did all kinds of stuff. You know, mm-hmm. I, I worked in IV rooms. I worked in compounding pharmacies. Mm-hmm. I've worked in narcotic pharmacies. I worked in chemo pharmacies. So I had a background in knowing how to put things together. Okay, you know, because when you if you're in the hospital and you get an IV. It wasn't a pharmacist that made that. It was mm-hmm. a pharmacy technician that made that. And then the pharmacist signed off on that. So and you were a pharmacy. Mm-hmm. I was a pharmacy technician. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. For, for 10 years. So I did, That's you know, long time. so I knew how to make things and mm-hmm. making skincare is very similar to cooking food. Okay. You know, you just have to figure out, you know, and, and, and as long as it's nothing that's like an herb that can affect your psyche or something like that you can figure out how much of something to put in something and you just test it and see you know the first version of honey pot was very strong but you know now it's not it's not as strong because Mm -hmm. it's like anything else if you put it out into the world you have to dial it down you Mm -hmm. know but yeah it might be too strong for somebody and working um in this industry now on this side and like creating these products all these different products that you Mm -hmm. have now what's something interesting that you learned just about vaginas that maybe you didn't know before or you feel like a lot of women may or may not know Uh, something interesting that i've learned about vaginas Uh uh-huh um or taking care of them (laughs) they're so delicate (laughs) um thank you um That it actually shouldn't be. Everybody go- says that they're really, really sensitive, right? I'm really, really sensitive. I'm really, really sensitive. Your vagina really shouldn't be really, really sensitive. So if you if you do have a problem with sensitivity, mm-hmm. then that tells you that there's probably some sort of like an underlying. Not I don't want to call it an issue, but maybe like an allergy. Like it could maybe be something that you're using. It could be, yeah, to. something that you're using. You're allergic to. If your if your body is is hypersensitive, it's trying to tell you something. You know. But what mm-hmm. is it trying to tell you? Because I remember I went to when I tell you I was struggling with BV so severely that I went and got an allergy test to mm-hmm. see what it is that I could be allergic to, and they said I wasn't allergic to anything. Well, BV and then I was like, well. Okay. What the fuck? Well, and then what? I'm not a doctor, so let me just start right. off by saying that. But I, but I, I, um, because this is what I do and this is my life's work, I'm naturally good at understanding how to take care of a vagina. I mm-hmm. did want to be a doctor at one time, but I decided against it. Um, the thing about BV, and this is not scientific evidence, what I'm about to tell you, but this is from my learnings. The vagina is a very simple organ on your body. And the way that it's measured is through is through pH. Everybody hears that. That's like the magic word when you mm-hmm. think about vaginal health. If the pH of your vagina is not between like 3.5 to like 4.7, the moment that it goes over that, you're in a you're in a dark place for the rest of your life. No, <laughs> it's not for the rest of your life. <laughs> it's. It's like this. The the thing about the thing about about bacterial vaginosis that people have to understand is it is a pH problem. The way that I describe it. What is pH? pH means per hydrogen. Right. Um, 
So it's on a scale, right? And if you look, if you think of a scale to the left, it's acidic. To the right, it's alkaline. Mm -hmm. In the middle, it's neutral, Mm -hmm. right? Your body, your blood should be alkaline. Mm -hmm. Your vagina is acidic, right? Every month, a woman gets her cycle. What happens with with blood? Blood is alkaline. Mm -hmm. So when the blood comes down, the reason why you notice a change in your body, you you typically know you're going to come on your period. You might have stronger hormones. You might smell. Your underarms might smell because your hormones are raging, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So and also what happens is the the smell of your vagina changes. It's prepping for blood to come Mm -hmm. because when the blood comes down, it's going to it's going to make the pH of your vagina go up. What's supposed to happen is that the pH is supposed to go right back down. Mm -hmm. Right. But if your pH was already off and then and then you get your period. Now it went higher, more towards neutral than it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like if you it's like if you your bank account was at zero and then Mm. a bill came through. Bitch, how hard is it to get back to fucking Because now you haven't got the... Because now you're already you you have got the overdraft fee. Exactly. And, and then the so, next bill came. Right. So and you got the other overdraft fee. And, and you crying. Exactly. Are you crying trying and, to transfer <laughs> the funds? <laughs> but you don't have nowhere to transfer them from. Now you got the interest and <laughs> now you're you crying. <laughs> crying. But, but, that's, but that's the vibe though. Right. So, so what you have to do is make sure it's a very simple thing on your body, even though it does not seem simple. You might be using the wrong thing to wash yourself. Mm -hmm. That will throw your pH off. You may be a dick. You may be uh, um, allergic to the person that you have in sex with. The girls were talking about that today. A lot of girls were saying that they found out through their doctors that the doctors were like, I think you're allergic to your boyfriend. Yeah. Whoever, and, or whoever you're having sex with. Exactly. So you have to pay mm. attention to that because mm-hmm. if he comes inside of you, Woo. a man's a man's cum is actually very healthy. It's crazy. If he's healthy. If he's healthy. Right. But for the most mm. part, if if he's healthy, if he eats well, if he drinks his drinks water and takes care of himself. Water. His cum is really good for you, actually. Mm-hmm. But it's not good for you. It's good for the inside of your body. It would be good for you to eat. Right. And it's it's there. It's meant to go into your vagina so that you can have babies. Right. Mm-hmm. But uh, but but cum is alkaline. Right. Mm-hmm. So when you try to mix an alkaline thing with a really acidic thing or an acidic thing that the pH is off and it's not where it needs to be. Plus, you're using the wrong thing to wash yourself. You may not be eating the right way. You you understand what I'm saying? You may not even be that's cleaning a bad yourself chemistry properly. Experiment. You're just, it's a bad chemistry experiment. And that's what you have to pay attention to. So let me ask you this. When you created this product, was it the product alone that cured your BV? Or did you also have a change in your eating habits? Were you like, okay, I also got to change what I'm putting in my body? At that time, I was so vegan. I did not eat rice. I did not eat potatoes. And I did, did you not do eat that bread. because of what was going on? No, I did that because I had just made a huge lifestyle shift. Okay. So you were already vegan mm-hmm. when you already started. I was already vegan when this happened. This can happen if you're a hardcore raw vegan. Mm-hmm. This can happen, mm-hmm. right? Th- seriously. Um, but for me... Honey pot was the thing. If it was Monday when I made it by Friday, it was gone Mm -hmm. and it never came back. Now, that doesn't mean that for every person that's listened to this. Mm -hmm. That was my way. Had that not happened for me, we wouldn't even be sitting here right now. Mm -hmm. Right. So that needed to happen for me. I get love letters from women that that does happen from them. Mm hmm. You know, I had a woman who had bacterial vaginosis for eight years. I had it for eight months. Eight years. She had it for eight years. She used honey pot and it it took it away. But that doesn't mean that that's going to happen for everybody. Have you ever gotten a BV infection since you? No. Okay. I haven't. Wow. What do you think about? I've had a yeast infection though. That's what I've gotten a lot is the yeast infections. I've had two yeast infections in my life. Those are the worst. And it always happens after I end up having to take antibiotics for something else. Yeah. And they tell you that you might get this. So you can take like, mon- you can use Monistat 
And I'm just like, I don't, I don't want to do all of that. I don't want to be putting all these creams because what if I don't get the yeast infection? Then I'm, I'm about to cause a yeast infection or a whole nother set of problems because yeast infections are the worst. But, um, a lot of people were asking, I'm curious to know, what do you think about some of these other products? Like somebody asked me about coconut oil. I know that you said that you use that in your stuff, yeah. but what about like the tea tree oil suppositories? And somebody said boric acid, which honestly I thought was to kill roaches, but I did some Googles today and I I said, oh, people are using that. No, people okay. use that. People use that. I did not know that. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of remedies out there. Again, mm-hmm. I'm not a doctor, so I can't um, tell anybody what what's, to what's wrong not. and what's right. You have to really go with your heart and see what you feel like, um, you know. But, yes, boric acid is a remedy. Um, tea tree suppositories is a remedy. Honey pot is coming out with remedies. This next year, which I'm really like excited a suppository about. suppository type of thing? Yeah, we're doing a suppository and a cream. So we're wow. literally, we're going into clinical trials for that right now. When you That's do cool. stuff like this, since you are not a doctor, are doctors mad at you? Absolutely not. Okay. No, doctors are happy that, um, that we... I have, I'm friends with doctors that are OBGYNs and, you know... If it's a doctor that doesn't give a fuck, then mm-hmm. yeah, they're probably mad, right? Because bacterial vaginosis keeps a lot of OBGYN offices open, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but if it's a doctor that really cares and like cares about her her patient and really and sees them as a human, um, you know, then they're absolutely thrilled mm-hmm. that they can offer their 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 patient something that's actually going to work for them mm-hmm. and give them some relief. Wow. But I, I look for me, I don't I don't I'm not in business. I don't really give a fuck about doctors being mad or 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 not being mad. The th- only thing that I care about is being able to develop products for women that work that are efficient and that can give them all the things that they need, whether it's daily, monthly, you know, whatever it is, whether it's sexual, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever it is. I want to develop really beautiful products for women that work. Do you think you'll start making tampons? I already make them. I you do? You already have tampons. Oh, I yeah. thought she just had pads. I was that's on okay. website. No, that's cool. Yeah, we have tampons. Yeah, we have a natural, clean tampon right now. We're transitioning into an organic cotton tampon mm-hmm. uh, next year. Hmm. Yeah. I'm going to have to switch because I do. I don't like pads. I like your panty liners. I don't use pads. I use tampons. But like to know that you'll have that you have those. I got to look for them in the store. They're not in the store. They're not. Yet. Where are they? They're on our website. Oh, OK. Yeah. Um, we're working on getting them in stores. OK. So yeah. dope. I cannot believe we're really sitting here with you. This is such an honor. Sister, that makes me feel happy. Thank you for feeling. Thank that you. Way. We're going to take a quick break and then we're going to dive right back into this discussion. All right, you guys. Taking care of your body and your mind is important, whether you meditate, exercise or take a hot bath to unwind. Feeling good is good for you. And with Dipsy Stories, you can reach a whole new level of self-care. Dipsy is an audio app full of short, sexy stories and guided sessions designed to turn you on. Each story is created with women in mind. They're relatable and immersive. And there's something for everyone. Whether you're into men, women, or maybe both at the same time, Find stories about strangers meeting on the beach in Mexico or seeing that ex you can't stop thinking about on the subway or a partner who wants to up the ante in the bedroom. And the guided sessions can help you unlock new confidence or heighten intimacy with your partner. Those are read by Medina Monroe, just so y'all know. And for our listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering a 30 day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash cocktails. That's a 30 day free trial when you go to D I P S E A stories.com slash cocktails. Dipsystories.com slash C O C K T A L E S. Okay, guys, remember to check out ratedintimate.com. Matina, did you get a chance to try out your product? Girl. Would you try? Because you made a face. Okay. Of pleasure. The Wee Vibe, the one that you were like, that one can connect to the Wi Fi and the Both music. of them do, don't they? 
The big one does. And I connected it to that. <laughs> you stay, you stay. And it was like, you know how the beat Wait, is. what? You know that you, it's called You Stay by Meek Mill. And it starts off with that Spanish woman singing. She's like, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to write that down. Okay, in my notes, well, when but... you connect your vibrator to that song. We stay. The beat. Meek that's how you know if a beat is, goes really hard. Rappers need to start doing that. Like, Plug the, it up to the Wii vibe. Plug it up to the Wii vibe. I mean, you just, it goes to, cause the vibrator goes to the beat. And I was like, uh-huh. huh, and I love that song. I fucking love Rated Intimate. The toys are just phenomenal. I love them too. I was dancing around in my living room in my lingerie <laughs> the other day. And I don't know who the fuck I thought it was. Raven got me drunk. Um, she took me to the club and all sorts of other things that I didn't need to do on a Sunday night. Let me tell you, I just felt so good. I had played with my toy. I had a hot bath. Hot. With some bath salts and my, um, that same toy. I haven't even busted out the panties with the little bullet in it, wow. but I used that toy and I used it in the tub and it was fine in the tub. It worked in the tub and it was like a totally different sensation than how it is in my bed. And so then later when I changed to lingerie and I was seeing Mariah Carey as I usually do on Sunday nights. I was just like, I just feel good. Yeah. I don't know what text messages I sent out. I really wanted to like do a factory sh- restore on my phone because I don't know who got pleased that night, but oh, you was it was good. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. God, um, yeah, but when I woke up in the morning, I thought it was Sunday. It was Monday. Well, and I need to be at work. It? Yes, I was. I was 35 minutes late because I woke up at nine o'clock. I was like, oh, it's Sunday. I can go back to sleep. And then I was like, wait a minute, bitch. It's actually Monday. And I was like, oh, God. Oh, God. But, you know, whatever. It's not like I'm usually on time anyway. So um, it was great. But if you guys want to check out any of the toys that we uh, mentioned on the show or the lingerie, because they offer both. Girl, yes. I want one. You want one? I want one of, like, both of those things. <laughs> They're so great. Yeah. You get a discount if you use the code cocktails. And if you go to ratedintimate.com slash cocktails, you can see everything that we talk about on the show. And then enter in the code cocktails. Everything is pretty much on sale. And then you get an extra discount off of that. So wow. check it out. Send us your reviews. And we'll talk about them on the show. But I love Rated Intimate. Well, I'll have to show you Please. what we have. We, we we've got some you. good we, stuff. I they hook just, us up. I'm like, am I? I don't even know if I need Even if they hand. weren't paying. You do. I, I, I mean, I definitely do, but like, but it's uh, it's, I don't know if I need their mm, penis. Right, you can take it slow. <laughs> I just want to lay up under him and smell his bond number nine. Okay, <laughs> all right, okay. So now uh, we're back with Beatrice. So um, I wanted to know: Do you think that I, I saw lubricant? Yes. Uh, what's in the lube? It is glorious. Ooh, it's kiwi vine extract. Does it have a scent? It from does, the kiwi? Because I love no, that because, smell. Because it's not, it's not from the kiwi fruit. Oh. It's from the kiwi vine. Okay. Which grows the fruit. Okay. So, um, the source. The kiwi vine is what makes kiwi so, um, uh, so, so wet. You know, mm-hmm. and and basically, it feels like the way that the mucosa feels when you're aroused. Mm-hmm. It feels like the same exact feeling. It's oh, fantastic. The same consistency and everything. The same consistency. Yeah. It's mm. glorious. So it doesn't mm. feel, and it's water based. So it doesn't feel like you're using lube, you know? Oh, it and just it, feels it, like you extra juicy. It just feels mm-hmm. like you extra juicy. Yeah. Extra juicy. Add yeah. that to my shopping cart. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder, I was reading some stuff up on you about you today, and I was wondering, how did you how did you get the funding to do this? It said that you had <laughs> you got a, a million dollars in funding to do Honey Pot. Is that correct? I've we've raised more than a million. How did you do that? Because as Kiki and I, we're we're young entrepreneurs with our podcast, and we are also trying to fund something mm-hmm. and sing along. And wanted to know how did you do that? Like, what are the steps in like successfully coming up with the money to make your dreams come true? First of all, you. Well, our, okay. So first, the first amount of money that we raised, my brother Simon Gray, um, who's who's also co-founder, one of the co-founders, um, he he, we basically went to the Bronner Brothers Hair Show, mm-hmm. but in order to go, because that was how we launched, in order to go, we needed money because we had to buy labels and caps and bottles and ingredients and buy a website. And, I mean, it was all this stuff. So he found twenty thousand dollars. By what somebody that he, he, he found twenty thousand. Well, he well he's he's an accountant, so he's connected oh, to people okay. with money, right? So then, um, so we so we did that, and then years later, 
um, like two years later, Target came to us and said that they had heard the, the buyer had heard about our product. She was getting her hair done and she had heard about our product her by her hairdresser. Mm-hmm. And um, and so they reached out. We still had to go through everything that everybody else has to go through. But once they got to a yes, then we had to go find money. So, but to make but, so much product to put. Yeah. Stores. But the important okay. part was that we had the distribution to do that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, if you're coming, if you're working on a product line, um, you know, you want to make sure before you ask anybody for a dollar, you want to make sure that whatever the thing is that you make, that it works mm-hmm. and that it does what it needs to do and that you have put your own sweat, blood and tears into it. You know, um, a, a couple years later, we raised money. We raised $3 million with the new voices fund. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, we had a reason to raise the money. You know, we were getting into more retailers. We needed to hire people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, and, and to be honest, the amount of money that we've raised, maybe we've raised like four and a half million dollars, which may sound like a lot of money in our room, but my, but, but it's not, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot of money, but it's not because, but a lot of money is relative. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Right. It's not a lot of money because when you look at what my what my competitors have done, they've raised nearly probably like 70 or 80 million dollars for Summer's Eve. No, not for oh. Summer's Eve. Because I think I'm right talking now, about that shit don't work. No, I'm talking about my natural competitors. Oh, Summer's Eve is a multi billion dollar company, um, you know, that's owned by a, by another company. That people need to stop using. Well, well I, I you won't don't have to say it. I, I won't say that. Um you know, if there was no summer's Eve, there may not be a honey pot. So I try to pay respect to the people that to the to the companies that came before. Plus, you never really talk down on your competitors, you know. Mm-hmm. I hear you. But I and hear so you, but. to answer your question, how do you do that? You 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 create a fucking amazing business. That's mm-hmm. what you do. And then you and then you create a reason for that amazing business to um to need money so that you can grow Mm -hmm. right you can do you know if if you got game and you got people around you that are worth millions of dollars and there's a lot of disposable income sure you can go and you can find investors before you've hatched an idea look in in white america that shit happens all day every day sometimes in black america too right Mm -hmm. um but the only thing that you run risk of um is that that thing may or may not work an investor knows that it's an investment and they could lose it. Right. But Mm -hmm. being black, being a woman, you should have more responsibility for it because if you fail with the investor that you, that you work with, if that, especially if that investor doesn't look like you, if you fail, the next girl that comes that looks like you may not get a chance. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure that whatever you're doing, if you want, if you want it to be a thing where you need to raise money for it, Make it a thing, Mm -hmm. you know, make it something that 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 goes. Honeypot comes from nothing. Right. So, um, you know, you can do it. Mm -hmm. You can make you can make it work out of nothing. I know that because we did that. So. Wow. As you um, grew your product, did you have to change your formula at all? Well, I know that you said you had to take it from being stronger, but did you have to change like your packaging or like your marketing strategies? Absolutely. What did you have to do? It's changed over the years. You know, when we first started, the thing was, let's just put a label on a bottle and order a cap and go to all these small suppliers to try to make this thing work. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but now, now that millions of dollars has gone into it and hundreds of thousands of people buy this stuff every day. Right. Um, now we have to have a strategy for everything. Now we've got other people's money in our business. So Mm -hmm. we have to really be respectful and, and keep our eye on the prize because that's because we've taken other people's money Mm -hmm. and we don't take that lightly. Mm -hmm. Right. And then even on the, on the bigger scale, um, we, we also don't take it lightly that women have allowed honeypot to be in their lives. Right. Mm -hmm. So now everything has to have a strategy. Um, if anybody talks about honeypot, we have a design agency. They literally have um, what's called like a brand Bible mm-hmm. <laughs> that you have to create because once you're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars like on a website, right? Like our website costs a lot of money, right? 
Um, there's other websites that cost more money, but it costs a lot of money to mm-hmm. create, right? In order, but what built up to that cost is the look. How does it look? How does it feel? Mm-hmm. How does it sound? Who does it, what colors is it? You know, who do we want to talk to if it's millennial women, if it's millennial black women? Mm-hmm. It needs to look, sound, feel like a certain thing. So absolutely, we've we've had to train, change our marketing strategies. We've changed our packaging. I'm always having to make sure that, you know, our wash just went from being like 98% natural to now being 100% natural. So now Honey mm. Pot is the cleanest wash on the market. Our goal is to always try to make our, to improve our products um, across product mix, across ingredients, and then also across, across cost. Because that's a that's a big thing, too. We want mm-hmm. our customer to be able to afford our wash. So our goal is to always try to improve that cost. You know, it, we used to be at nine ninety nine. you know, when you started when we start. Yeah. I mean, e- at one time we were even more expensive than that. We were like eleven ninety nine. And now mm-hmm. it's what, seven ninety nine. Now it's eight ninety nine. Um, you know, but uh, but again, it took time to get to that because you have to be the more you buy, the less whatever your product is cost. Right. But you, but you gotta, you gotta get to the place where you're having mm-hmm. to buy more so that it'll cost less. So let me mm-hmm. ask you this: the more that your brand grows, or <clears throat> excuse me, does it ever? Have you ever had a moment where you're like, absolutely not, we're not changing that? Or do with the pe- the big million dollar companies that are putting money in, do they get to just be like, well, no, sh- sit down, we mm-hmm. are changing this? No, our investors. We've been very fortunate. Our invest. One of our biggest. Our, Investors is Richard Lou Dennis from um, from from Sundial Brands, um, Shea Moisture mm-hmm. the, from the um, Dennis family. But, um, you know, we have him. We've got uh, the Cummings family. Um, we, we've been very fortunate to have investors that are respectful mm-hmm. of us. Most most of the time, venture money and investors, if they're clever, mm-hmm. They're not trying to come in. The fact that they're putting their money into your business shows that they believe in what you're doing. Okay. So the last thing that they want to do is change it. is come in and completely change everything because whatever the thing is doing, obviously it's working, mm-hmm. right? Um, you know what they'll come in to do is you want to hot whenever you bring in a in an in investment money or like venture money, you want to make sure that you're bringing in intelligent money. So you're not just bringing in, you know, like at this point. For example, wh- where we are, right? Mm-hmm. The owner of this studio. He, I can't just have him come in to be an investor at mm-hmm. this point, right? Not that he asked to do that. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying anybody that with money can't just be like, hey, I got some money. Can I put Can I put it in? Mm-hmm. Where we are, we need money that is intelligent, mm-hmm. that can actually like bring echelons of like upper echelons. That's a good place of, to be where you know, don't feel like you got to take it from everywhere. Well, you, well we can't. You know, we, we can't just take it from everywhere. When we started, we could, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, we, we had a lot of hip hop money in this lat in, in one of our first big rounds. Um, but where we are right now is is we're at the level of like scale and we're in a lot of retailers and, you know, and you, you're thinking about supply chain every day. And like there's so many levels of business things that are happening. So mm-hmm. at this point, we have to have investors that understand how to make that machine grow. The real money. Yeah. A hip hop yeah. money will be like, well, <laughs> I'm gonna come in here and give you five hundred real quick, <laughs> and you make it turn around. Nigga, that's not how this shit works. <laughs> that's what the hip hop money do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel you. Um, what did you? I'm curious to know what did when you were a little girl. What did you want to be when you grew up? Oh God, I don't even remember that, man. Um, but. <sighs> I think I wanted to be a doctor. Oh, so this kind of lines up with that. Like, no, yeah, she's not a doctor, Close. but like, yeah, I'm a healer people. though. Yeah, I'm a healing people. Yeah. Um, are you dating anyone? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> what you mean? You know, you're what breaking you your heart. <laughs> that was a fuckboy statement. Stop. Hold on. That was a fuckboy answer. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. know. Somebody gonna listen and be like, "What, See, Beatrice? Be she they always be saying that to me." <laughs> <laughs> Good know. lord! Good lord! I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's one of them ones. If you hear your nigga say that, you'd be like, "What? <laughs> I'm coming out." I'll be cooking for you though. <laughs> 
<laughs> we be telling each other we love each other. What? You Uh-oh. don't know. Oh, we got together. <laughs> <laughs> I'm planning the wedding. Uh, 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 you know I'm not saying that. Okay. Kind of shit. It's back. The camera's back. So you don't know if you're dating anyone? <sighs> no, I don't. I'm um I'm really focused right now. Mm-hmm. You know? And it's it's not that I don't welcome it and it's not that I don't have people that I see because I do. Um but I don't really like to constrain myself around you know, words and shit, you know, like I, I just, at this point, I just want to live my life. Um, you know, if, if I'm, I'm here, I'm just here for it. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> I'm open to what life has to bring. I'm not interested in only dating one man. I like women, you know, mm-hmm. like I, um, I'm not necessarily interested in being sexual with a lot of people because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very protective of my energy. That's um, important. but and you don't want that BV to come back. Well, I'm playing. No, nah. <laughs> nah, yeah, exactly. I'm but no, I mean, but no, seriously, I mean, you know, you sex, sex, sex is some important up. shit. It's important, you know? and you know, and I, I'm a, I, 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 I really take care of myself, and I'm really like on some supernatural shit type mm-hmm. of a human, you know, and mm-hmm. you can't just give that away. That part, you just can't like m- niggas wouldn't even know what to do with that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I do know what you're saying. Um, and so, you know, I'm only fucking people that can do that. That mm-hmm. can that we do that together. You know, and so I am I am I living my life? Yeah, I am. I'm I'm having a good time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not constrained to any relationships. No. When you meet people and you're like looking at dating them romantically or being romantic with them any type of way, male or female, do they know who you are? Because ha- like owning a business like this is not one of those things where it's like Drake and everywhere he goes, everyone just knows I where he is. I prefer that it not be, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, women know who I am sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, Turn your mic towards me. Uh, w- women, women know who I am sometimes, but... Um, but that Man, doesn't really, so much. that doesn't matter to me though. No, not that it would. I'm no. just curious. They're like, honey pot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've met, I met, you know, I've, I've met a really dope woman through honey pot, mm-hmm. you know, who was amazing. You know what I mean? She listening right now. She going to be like, she, she <laughs> might be, she knows who she is. <laughs> <laughs> That's so dope. Yeah. But that, but honestly, that, that doesn't, that doesn't get me off. I don't. You know, I'd prefer that we just have a human conversation, mm-hmm. you know, a human conversation. Is it ever a turn off if they do know? No, no, no. It just is. Mm-hmm. You know, it's either people know or they don't know, but it doesn't matter if they know because there really ain't shit to know. Mm-hmm. I'm just doing what I like with my friends, you know, Yeah, <laughs> and being successful at it. I, it's not. Honey pot is it's it's not a um a place of grandeur for me. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It's what I do, you know. But who I am is nothing to do with what I do. Does that make sense? It makes so yeah. much sense. We just did an episode on this last week because we have um my mom had asked me a question about like not just my mom, a bunch of people had started at, to ask me as our show grows and more people know it. We talk about very intimate things on here. We have Kiki and I have shared some things that I don't even think that we have shared in conversation with each other, but we'll sit here and tell it to thousands of people. Mm-hmm. And so like people were like, do you think this is going to affect your dating life? In or a how does way? it, affect how your does day? it, you know, how are people approaching you now? And we were just like, wow, like we were on the same page with it. Like what it's, this is not, it's who we are, but it's not all of who we are. It's exactly. our, a week. That we talk about sex and right. fucking and some of our personal experiences and we've helped women open up about certain things and it's just like it's what and we it's do. Only some it's of not, it. It's and, not our and, whole yeah. sexual history. And quite honestly, who would want a nigga who would care about that? That's what I said. I was like, you know what? If he cares, I don't if want he, his ass. No. Because he's not for me. Because everybody, even if this is a piece, it's still a piece of me. Mm-hmm. So if you can't respect yeah. that and get with that, oh well. Everybody's out here fucking. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't matter who we fucking. It's our business. Mm-hmm. Right? And yeah. you're going to bear the responsibility if something comes of it or if, or if it doesn't. But who you share your body with is your business. Mm-hmm. Right. You should never feel ashamed of that. And if people are if sure, is it harder for me to date? Yes. But I'm an alpha female, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, I'm I'm 
I'm very authentic to who I am. Most people are not are not even on my fucking radio station. So they don't even know how to you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I, and that's not me trying to make myself sound better than anybody. Mm-hmm. But I just would prefer not to date the average person anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I we would that. we wouldn't relate. What are we going to talk about? What are we going to do? Like, Nothing. And it's going to be a waste of time. And then you're going to have an attitude. Like, yeah. I could have been working on my new strategy. Yeah. The next rollout yeah. for my new product that's about to pop off. It's streamlined. <laughs> Give me the garlic. <laughs> Where the garlic at? The cranberries. <laughs> Bitch, I'm going Y'all to the lab. Y'all on my nerves. Go get Where's me some Where's the marketing goddamn. team? We're, We're having an give emergency Give me the meeting. coconut <laughs> extract. And we going to try some chocolate this time. Get the fuck out of my face. You over here playing. Nigga. Over here. Where are my goggles? I'm supernatural. Get <laughs> <laughs> the fuck out of my face. I'm about to start telling niggas that. You know what the fuck? I am. Supernatural, supernatural. <laughs> the fuck on out my face. Oh god, <laughs> that's gonna be funny. But um, y'all don't forget, we're still looking for a bond date, so don't yeah, take all yeah. of this to heart. Oh, we're st- yeah. So obviously, um, you guys were asking. Medina has not found me a date yet. I don't have a date I for her looking. either. I've been looking too. You know what I the hard you part? Did have a date for me? He. I thought out. I did. Yeah. You send him a this picture the, and he was no, like, No, he knew who you were already. <laughs> this is the problem. And I'm going to tell you what it is. It has nothing to do with your personality, your appearance, he or doesn't want to anything. talk about it everything to do with that these and this is what i've been telling y'all for years and y'all be like oh kiki you're too picky you don't want short niggas the short niggas be lying too let me tell you they don't want to come on and talk about it i was like well it's not gonna be a regular episode it's a bonus episode so it's like not out to everybody they don't want to talk about it later and then they're then they get cocky like well i could take her on a date anyway but you haven't so I'm like, okay, well, fuck it. Who else you got? You got a friend? Because you're taking t- up too much time, and we've got a project to produce. Wow, that. But is, yes, that's the, the men that don't want to talk about it. They want to go on the date, and I'm like, I don't, I they don't, don't know what you think. What? We're the doing, date. We're Kiki and I are doing our own little research project. We're trying called okay. the Blind Date Project, and you know, dating is hard. Everyone always talks about how hard it is, specifically in Atlanta. So mm-hmm. we are going to put ourselves out there. I'm setting her up on dates. She's setting me up on dates. Blind and, dates. Blind dates. Like. Mm-hmm. Take, obviously know what we look like. We won't know what that person looks like, but we want to talk about what we expect on a date beforehand. And then afterwards, get the feedback from the man or the woman that went on the date with us. Get their feedback. What ca- what type of date is Kiki? What type of date am I? And do it separate so it's not like we have to look at each other yeah. and you can just feel comfortable. Like reality show confessional style. Like but just tell what me what you really, really thought. did wrong if someone did something wrong or if someone did something right. Mm-hmm. And the hard part with this is the men... They don't want to talk about it. They, they're like, okay, yeah, I'll go on the date. And they're like, oh, no, no, no. We don't want to talk about it. Why? Because they have three girlfriends out here and they don't want them <sighs> oh, to find out. That's that. what, that's, I honestly mm-hmm. really feel, and y'all correct me if I'm wrong by submitting your profile to my personal Instagram page so you can take Medina on a, out on a date. But that is the issue that I've run into with multiple guys who I was like, oh, Medina will really like this guy. I know she's going to be physically attracted. I think they will have a good time. I think he will show her a good time. There won't be any problems on the actual date it could end really well like you've already said you don't want anything serious out of it it's just for fun but it could go well like whether you fucked him or not you know (laughs) i think you would go out have fun have a good date it's not gonna be no happy hour bullshit Mm -hmm. you know a good quality date but then they're like oh well i gotta talk about it Yes. How many girlfriends do you have? And why don't you just lie to them like you've already been to it? I'm not understanding because in my mind, I'm just like, I've got a deadline to me. Yeah. We set the 19th, bitch. This is weekend. Wait. So do these guys know that this is what you're doing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they just agree that they just d- won't agree to do it because she they don't want to talk agree, about it. She had someone agree and now all of a sudden he He is he like, oh, I'll out. do it. And then he was like, wait, I got to talk about it. And that's why he was like, oh, no. So then he was like, well, I, I think I know some people. And then he was like going back and forth all week. I was like, I don't want to send her on a wishy-washy date. I'm not doing that. Like, I'm really genuinely trying to find a good match. Like, somebody I think that she will have a connection with. Not somebody just to go on the date and it'd but, be like but, some but fake blind date shit. But you're also shit. asking them to be on some blind date shit, though. But they know who she is. They know who I am. I don't She's know who they are. The no, no, date. but you've set all the pressure up at the beginning. 
to what let pressure? them know what what it is that, that's about to happen to them. You're just going on a date, and we just want you to talk about it. We want you to feel like it's fair that you get to share your side. It's not like we'll come back on the show and just bash you. Like if the date goes bad and Medina's really a bad date, but she comes back and says he's horrible, we just thought it would be fair that the guys got to tell their side yeah, of the story. It's like, well, actually, this bitch, she... this is what she did. She was 35 minutes late. Then she had an attitude. She's on her phone the whole time, mm-hmm. and she's complaining about me. So you're like, you know, everybody can tell their side. It'll be cool. And it's just bonus content. It's not the main show. So right. it's not going to be 50,000 people listening. It'll be whoever subscribed to the bonus content. I get it. It's very hard, but we're going to make this happen. I we feel like I'm going to have to set you we up might... on a, with a woman. Because gonna... the women are ready. And I might have to set you up with a non-black man. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. You, you date women too? Yeah, That's I do. I, I'm oh, kind of scared man, for Lord. whoever Kiki's going to set me up with because I feel like Why? it's going to be... I don't know because I feel like it's going to be listeners that are just trying to like, fuck. The listeners do want, but I mean... no, I have some like... <laughs> some... <laughs> Bitch, you said, mean, you, 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 said you wanted them for what? a good time, not a long time. Now, which one is it? I still want to but I know some dying. women who are like, okay. No, I mean, what those, they want to wine and dine you. Dine got to do with getting fucked. But they still want to wine and dine her, the I, listeners. I don't want it to be thing. like... They're just like, we get on the set and they're like, okay, you ready? Get the drink, get the drink, get the chat. No, no, they're no. ready to, they got gifts ready, bitch. What? The women are ready for they you. That's why I'm like. with Natasha. Where she at? It's not Natasha, uh-uh. but okay. <laughs> y- y'all hear that? I know y'all listening. We'll talk about I'm it tomorrow. Ready. I mean, Thursday. Sorry, Thursday. Kiki, are you open to going on a blind date with a woman? I'll go with a woman, but I want a woman like me, like a girly okay, a woman. girly girl. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, you like, like, you like, like boy girls? Like, like, I <laughs> don't really care as long as you look good. Medina's the the more open one on every aspect of like, except who? for the eating booty part. You the one that like. I'm not talking booty. about that. I'm What's talking about physical booty? appearance. Ain't nothing wrong with it. I don't mind eating booty. No, same. I think you know it's fine. <laughs> Is it clean? Yeah. What's that meme? Did you post that? Yeah. Well, it wasn't me. Listen, with the white the booty. Like, let me let me clean let this me wipe booty, the booty real quick. Uh-uh. See what this white looking like before I eat that ass. Uh uh-uh. You know, but um, <laughs> I can go on a date with a woman, but a girly woman. I will go on a date with a couple. I would prefer a couple to just a woman by herself. Do y'all hear this? We are open to all the dates. So Bitch, it's, stop getting, being it's scary. getting desperate out here. It's desert storm. <laughs> <laughs> <Which said, laughs> <"Shy rat." laughs> okay <laughs> don't shoot me though hands up don't shoot okay. oh good god should we move on to indecisive yeah, diane we gotta move on it's almost 10 o'clock so we're gonna go on to indecisive diane then we're gonna go to advice and beatrice is going to help us with this advice and i'm so excited about this what if you could use one program for all your health and weight loss needs no more hunting for training apps or workouts or calorie trackers and meal plans plus You can add a goal specialist and a community of members to keep you motivated and accountable. And it's like a workout bestie all in one place. If that's what you're looking for, Noom is your answer. I know that I'm constantly telling you guys about what's going on with me trying different diets and trying different workout plans, going to the gym, not going to the gym, trying different apps, trying different websites and all of these different things and things just aren't working. Part of it is like trying to figure out the habits and trying to figure out what's going to work best for my body style because what works for me may not work for the next person. And that's the beauty of Noom. So when you go on Noom, you enter in all the details about what your goals are, what you're trying to do. It's not a weight loss app. It's not a diet app. It's not a calorie tracker app. It's really just to help you develop and keep track of whatever your goals are as far as maintaining your health, losing weight. You don't have to lose weight to do it. You can maintain your same weight, but if you just want to make sure that you're making healthier choices or getting in the habit of being more active, whatever the case may be, Noom will help you do that. You have a community of people who you can message and talk to and make sure that you're all keeping each other motivated. You also get a goal specialist. Now, if you're anything like me, I don't like to be micromanaged. I don't want somebody who's like, oh my gosh, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it every five minutes. Like calm down. It's not that deep. I prefer somebody who will just make sure that check in every now and then make sure that I am staying on track or if I'm having issues, like what are the issues? Is there anything I can do to help? That sort of thing. And Noom allows you to even personalize what type of personality your goal specialist has. And the goal specialist is not a computer. It's not a robot. It's an actual person on the other end of the phone who's there to help you and keep you motivated along the way. 
I want to feel more confident in the things that I wear. I want to make sure that I'm constantly choosing healthy things and not just doing it for five days. And then on the sixth day, I'm binging on sweets and stuff because I just went cold turkey and deprived myself of all the things that I want. I want to make healthier decisions every day. I want to be more active and I want to make sure that I'm going to be around for a lot longer. They say Noom is based on a cognitive behavioral approach. And I just say it works like keeping track of my habits and looking and seeing like this is where it's at this time that I'm messing up or, you know, whatever's going on with me has been so helpful. And I really enjoy Noom. I actually started using Noom before Noom reached out to want to work with us. It's not a diet. It's a healthy and easy to stick to way of life. And that's what's most important. And we're all human. So if you get off track, there's no shaming. Just tips to help you get back on track tomorrow, which is the best thing for me. You don't have to change it all in one day. Remember that. Small steps make big progress. Sign up for your trial today at Noom. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash cocktails. C-O-C-K-T-A-L-E-S. What do you have to lose? Visit Noom.com slash cocktails to start your trial today. That's Noom, N-O-O-M dot com slash cocktails. The last weight loss program you'll need. Is there something that interferes with your happiness or is preventing you from achieving your goals? If so, BetterHelp Online Counseling is there for you. BetterHelp offers licensed professional counselors who are specialized in issues such as depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, sleeping, trauma, anger, family conflicts, LGBT matters, grief, self-esteem, and more. Connect with your professional counselor in a safe and private online environment. Anything you share is confidential and it's so convenient. You can now get help at your own time and at your own pace. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions plus chat and text with your therapist. If you're not happy with your counselor, you can request a new one at any time at no additional charge. Best of all, it's truly an affordable option. And for Cocktails listeners, get 10% off your first month with discount code COCKTAILS, C-O-C-K-T-A-L-E-S. So why not get started today? Go to BetterHelp.com slash cocktails. Simply fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with a counselor you'll love. That's BetterHelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash cocktails. Would you stop thinking about what everyone wants? Stop thinking about what I want, what he wants, what your parents want. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What do you want? What do you want? Okay. Okay. All right, Diane. So do you have any cute little date ideas for our listeners this week? Hey, ladies, it's me, Indecisive Diane. And listen, I went to Oklahoma City this weekend, and there's this cute little place. It's called Nick's Place. It's a diner in the daytime, and it's a lounge at night. I know, it sounds really cheap, but it's not. Go here. They have American comfort food. You're going to love it. Go here with a date with somebody that has a little money. I know it's Oklahoma City. It's a little bit country, but you're going to love it. Here's the address. It's called No. Here's the address, 116 North Robinson Avenue, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. They close at 11 p.m. You're going to love it. They don't really have top shelf alcohol, but it's okay. Go there. It's like a speakeasy. Okay, Diane. Thank you, girl. No problem, ladies. Bye. That's where we had my sister's rehearsal dinner. It was really cute. Was it? I mean, they were playing NSYNC when we got there, and I had to NSYNC. jump on there and tell them to change the music up real was quick. Was it karaoke? No, it was just like, okay. you know, it's Oklahoma. No, no, I've never been to Oklahoma. I love it. No, I don't want y'all to think I'm just throwing shade, but it you is different. Are. It's country. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's how I feel when I go to Natchitoches. Yeah, it's country. But so you I feel you. <laughs> Louis- exactly. That was such a great drop. Central Where Louisiana. Is it's like it's okay. nothing is there. Many places still have actual jukeboxes. Um, and then, but you can appreciate it. Like, would you move back? No. Hell no. <laughs> I barely visit these days. Okay. Um, it's time for us to move on to advice. Remember, if you would like to ask us for some advice, first of all, remember, we are not licensed in anything but how to drive, barely. And you can <laughs> email us at askcocktails at gmail.com. I don't know if you want to read any of these, but these are all, these are both advice as well. 
Okay. This one really stuck out to me. I'm going to read this first. The subject line says depression. Is it a deal breaker? Hey, ladies. I love the show so much. You ladies are amazing. So I need some advice. I have been dating this guy for about a month now. We talked and got to know each other the entire summer. And when cuffing season started, he immediately decided that I was the one. Things were great. I got good morning texts. I love good morning texts. The sex was bomb as fuck. And the just because gifts kept a smile on my face. When he initially presented me the idea of us being an exclusive couple, I was a little hesitant at first. I knew he had issues with depression and that it tended to hit him pretty hard. For example, back in August, he was dealing with something and got in the car and drove 10 hours to North Carolina to clear his head. He said nothing to me and basically disappeared for four days. Fast forward to now, and I have not seen or spoken to him in five whole days. He texted me earlier in the week and said that he was very depressed. So my question is, should I leave now before my feelings get even more involved? I know depression is only one aspect of a person's life, but how much of it is, but how much of it is me just leading with empathy and not logic? Thanks, ladies. Sincerely, Sleepless in New York. Wow. That's so rough because it's like, it's sad. Cause he's, de- I mean, I hope he's depressed and he's not really driving to North Carolina for a whole family, like a secret family. <laughs> Because that could also be an option. People are really great liars. Girl, niggas be having secret families every day. All the time. All the time. But <laughs> if you really yeah. think that, that he is... De- Girl, you already know. <laughs> that shit came from somewhere deep. That's a whole trigger for me, too. It's like, because niggas really be lying. So it's like, I'm not saying he's lying about being depressed. Depression but is he serious. might be. He could be. That's still an option, though. You probably mm-hmm. need to follow him first before we dive all the way into depression. <laughs> Can, do you have the coin to hire a private not investigator? For, not yeah, or just turn his location on hours. and give yourself access to his location if he has an iPhone. Yeah, fine, friends. And I'm follow that nigga, because you're probably going to be real shocked. Access. Yeah, but if he really is depressed... Yeah. And you're not all the way in love yet. And y'all definitely aren't married. I am so sorry. And this is going to sound really harsh, but you're not obligated to get him through his depression. And I know that sounds rough, but if you want to live your best life and you don't feel like you want to deal with that, you don't have to. Right. That's my advice. Yeah. Because whatever it is, you got to be here for it and be responsible for the fact that you chose to be there. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes it's too much. Sometimes it's too much. And you might not be there in your life. And you might really be in that phase where you just want to have fun and you don't want to deal with all that. And that's a lot. Yeah. I I don't know that I could do it. I don't know that I could. Especially if love is not involved. If we're not in love. That's a lot of responsibility. Birds of a feather flock together, though. So you're saying like she could fall into depression or I'm not saying that she could. I'm just saying that. You are typically who who are you who you're with who you're fucking you're 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 you know that's a real thing especially if it's consistent. Mm-hmm. So if you if you're if you're tying up your soul and your energy because that's what's happening when you having sex, mm-hmm. and that's not in the Christian biblical way. Mm-hmm. That's not how I'm saying that. It's just real mm-hmm. energy is it a real is. thing, and when you when you connect to another human, that's a real thing. Um. So if you if you decide to do that, you have to know that that's who you're connected with mm-hmm. and it's going to affect you. you it know? is it's definitely going to affect you. Kiki didn't even have no words. She was like, Bitch. I really don't. I think you got to do what's best for you, because Always. at the end of the day, he took that long ass drive to North Carolina. I North Carolina for 10 hours to clear his motherfucking head. He was thinking about himself. And sometimes you have. Also, like all jokes aside, sometimes when people are feeling depressed or just really sad or dealing with whatever issues they are having personally, sometimes they do need to be left alone mm-hmm. and you let them figure it out in their own way. Doesn't mean you can't be, you can call me when you need me from a distance type of person, mm-hmm. but sometimes you have to protect yourself too. So like, even when I felt depressed, I didn't, I wasn't always the most responsible with my friends and how I treated them. But it's like I also recognize why certain people would pull away because it's a lot to deal with. And you don't want to always be around somebody who's not feeling their best. And I think that that person, if they ever come out of it, they'll realize that and they won't be upset with you for it. But you got your own life to live. You can't be tied up in that. And and that's that's really that's really the key to it. 
right? Mm-hmm. You have to take care of yourself. You do. Um, like you want that person to take care of themselves. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't you take yeah, care but, of yourself? But, but that is their responsibility that, mm-hmm. that you can't, you can't, you, they want, they want you to be there. They want you to love you, right? Like they want mm-hmm. you to love them, but it's not your responsibility to, to take care of somebody else. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, just like you just said, yeah. you can choose to do it. But you have to know that that's a choice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Send them to a therapist. Tell them to call Better Help. Yeah, and then also and tag the them in some of the inspirational posts on Instagram. Yeah, or just screenshot it and text it. So They're not doing. a social media person. Yeah. Okay, this one is somebody else who might end up where this man is. Ain't no side bitch. Wow. Okay, this says, uh, <laughs> hey, ladies, I absolutely love your show. Thank you. It has been very inspiring and insightful. Oh, those are nice words. So let me get to the point. When I was pregnant with my child, I was single and I wasn't ready to be with his dad, even though his father really wanted to be with me. I already know where this is going. My main focus was getting my shit together for my son, not that relationship shit. Months after I had my son, his father and I um, were were looking on a relationship and we were happy. I guess she meant we're working on. Oh, yeah, we're working on a relationship and we're happy. He was living with me and driving my car. Oh, girl, it's already going I'm washing his clothes, cooking. That's all choices. Basically, wifey, rolls eyes emoji. Anyway, fast forward to about six months ago. Okay. Y'all, he done told her, nope, he got a baby on the way. See, this why. But you didn't say you was pregnant. Okay. Okay. See, this is kind of shit that sets me off. I don't know if I should have read this one. Okay. He has a baby on the way. Keep in mind, nothing changed between us at the time. But once he told me that I completely cut him off, but we were still having sex. Well, baby girl, that's not completely that's not cutting completely him off. completely cutting him off. You didn't. Com- okay. Because I sorry. thought I was drunk and reading the letter wrong, but that's what she wrote. Okay. Because the dick was bomb. Oh, we knew that. Okay. Come to find out he's been in a relationship with his other baby mama for a good minute and still trying to be with me. And when I called him out on it, he got so mad and convinced his family that I was the one who couldn't move on. This sounds super cool. To this very day, he is still trying to be with me while with a whole girlfriend. I think they still may be together. My question is, do I check him yet again? Well, I want to keep the peace for our son, but this nigga got me fucked up because I ain't no side bitch. Well, and do I tell my my side of things to his family and his girl? No, I have a headache. No, <laughs> this is no, gonna. Girl. If you tell them, I'm gonna be straight up with you. This is just going to lead to embarrassment, and you're gonna be ostracized from the family and possibly y'all's child together. You just gonna have to bite the bullet. You fucked up. You mm-hmm. shouldn't have kept things going. When you said you cut him off with everything but sex, that means you didn't completely cut him off. You, you didn't completely you cut him off. Kept things going, and if it's the other baby mama. <clears throat> And he had the baby before, and then he had a baby with you, and then he had a baby with her. Sorry, girl, to break the news. You're second place. And I, when people say that they want to keep the peace for their kids, it's like keeping the peace for your child means you're not even going to be caught up in this bullshit. He's going to do what he needs to do for the child. You're going to do what you need to do for the child, and you're not worried about who he's You don't he's have fucking. to be in a relationship with him. You yeah. don't have to be fucking and, him for your child. Your child don't care if y'all fucking or not. And unfortunately, you just going to if you do really love the dude and you just going to if it's for your son, you she just got to not. I, and she keeps fucking with him. So I, I feel like check stop if she those words. Take an L. You got played. Don't try to figure it did, out. But did she get played, though? I mean, the only reason why I think she did, did she was because he had a whole She's girlfriend. A I don't think, I don't think, I think that everybody's looking at it the wrong way. I think Tell they're us. all playing each other. Well, she's I not think, playing I think that her boyfriend is just not a one woman man, obviously. It's not her boyfriend, though. It's what, look. Baby daddy. She, he, yeah. They got a kid together, nigga. They uh-huh. go together. Mm-hmm. They go together. It's something. For, for 18 years. She said she didn't want no relationship. That's but, why I'm saying it's but, not a boyfriend. But her actions aren't. But she 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 that. can she, she can choose to feel like she again. I'm sorry that I'm on some devil advocate shit. Oh, it's I'm fine. Sorry. 
But look, you got you got what you wanted to get out of it. You got the the good D. You have a child. You understand what he's got going on elsewhere, right? But she doesn't understand it. Well, she clearly does because she wrote a whole fucking dissertation on it right now. <laughs> <laughs> right, she hold, she wrote an email about it, so she, she understands. doesn't understand what they have she, going on. But it doesn't. It but like my point me. is, is it doesn't really matter what they have going on because she still chose to do what she did, mm-hmm. right? And what he has going on isn't affected by what they're doing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if anybody got affected, obviously it was her. But she doesn't mm-hmm. have to choose to look at it that way. To be completely honest, she mm-hmm. didn't get played. She just fucked a nigga who's got another relationship. So basically, girl, put that nigga <laughs> on child support. It's a wrap. <laughs> Find somebody else. Exactly. But put his ass on child but you, support. Take you some didn't... time to yourself. Yeah. Or, or go to ratedintimate.com slash cocktails and buy yourself a couple of new vibrators. Get us some lingerie. Some lingerie. Walk around and feel sexy. Some toy cleaner. Put Head on, on. to the honey pot. carry on. So when you get back, at, uh, back to fucking, you don't have BB or nothing. You can keep everything <laughs> regulated. You have some cooling pads. I saw that bomb on there. Yes. You might have cramps. You don't want to have your mood fucked up because you're already annoyed with this man you got to deal with forever. Like, good luck <laughs> to you, baby girl. Good I, luck. Hope, I hope, ooh, I don't even know what I hope, girl, but I hope it gets better because that sucks. It will get better. It, it don't suck if she's keeping herself in the no. damn Come on, man. It sucks that she feels like she has to write a letter to us, which we appreciate. But it's like, yeah. you're just feeling, I don't know how I feel right now. Let me get somebody else's opinion. I'm going to write in a letter. I know what that feels like when you just, you're just stuck in this feeling. Like, you know what it looks like, but you know how you feel. And I understand that. So it's like, that's just a sucky place to be. So I hope that she feels better. I when don't care I was about the situation. That, you do what you want to do. Yeah. I want you to feel better. Yeah. When I was reading that, I said the same thing. I was reading it and I was like, wow, it's just, it's crazy to read letters like that. And you're like, girl, do this. But then when you're in a situation and you're like, but I love him. Mm-hmm. That which, voice which, in my head be which, saying, girl, which, do this. Which and I'll I, be like, girl, shut the fuck I, up. Which I completely Pour me a shot. understand. Yeah, because it's when you're which in a situation. Which I completely understand. But I'm going to tell you what my friend tells me all the time. If you what? feel good in something, feel that. Mm-hmm. But right. when you start feeling true. bad, let it yeah, go. Yeah, figure out how you feel. Do you want to drink Hennessy tonight and be sad? Or do you want to drink a little tequila and just call him later? Exactly. And that can be that can be your deciding factor. <laughs> and that's my what point. What you decide to do. Don't feel shame in that. Mm. Yeah. If you want, if you've been fucking that nigga, if you want to fuck him, fuck him. What are you going to do? But don't go and ruin every everything else. Don't go and ruin all the lives and talk to all the family. Yeah, I don't think you should that's talk your, to the That's families. your business. That's, that's going to just business. fuck things up exactly. on so many levels. I exactly. made a post the other day. Don't worry. Th- this side bitch thing, it just really has people fucked up. But believe it or not, a lot of people are in that position. Man. Yeah, because it's, it it's some made up shit. Man. Yeah. Uh, like you yeah. said marriage was it's some you know, made up shit just, have, have just you ever been a side heart. bitch you know that oh me too have you ever been a side bitch <laughs> yeah okay we all been side but, but it but it but it's like what the fuck does that even mean mm-hmm. read your next thing <laughs> okay yeah what's the next letter girl are we going advice or are we moving on to cocktails just one more advice you one got an advice? advice up i do I said, uh, you printed them today. I did that print them helpful. today. That was helpful. Thank you. Okay. So this one, the subject was middle school love. She says, Ooh. hey, y'all. First and foremost, please keep me anonymous. I've been listening to your podcast for going on a year and just love everything about it. Now for my advice. There's this guy I've known since I was 13 years old. We've always vibed and had chemistry, but nothing ever came to fruition until we graduated and both had our first child to other people. We used to just have sex here and there, and then he went to jail. he came home after a few years and we reconnected we started hanging out and sleeping together again and then i just ghosted him i can't really remember what caused me to do it but i used to have an issue with handling my emotions and i would just stop talking to guys before it got too deep the next year he went back to jail I always thought about him because we just had this connection but i figured he ended up finding someone else in jail or was mad at me for ghosting (laughs) Fast forward to him. You try. I love that the booty. Fast forward to him coming home again. We ended up running into each other a couple of times. And after like the third time seeing each other, he asked for my number. I was just ending a relationship and figured, why not? So we started getting back acquainted and chatting. And he told me that he was actually hurt that I ghosted him years ago. He asked if 
It was something he did. Was it the sex? And I said, absolutely not. He has a beautiful big dick and knows how to use it well. But I told him I was dealing with some emotional shit and I've been working on getting my mind right over the years. So here we are hanging out, enjoying each other. And he drops a bomb on me. He might be going the fuck back to jail. I'm like, nigga, you're the worst criminal alive. Please (laughs) stop. But the T is, I love him, y'all. I'm in love with him. Like, I'm really in love with him. He makes me feel so safe and secure. He's funny. He's smart. He's sweet. He just does (laughs) dumb shit. Hence why he's always in jail. He loves me. He's told me numerous times. So what? I'm, so what I'm asking is, should I ride this shit out? I know that we can be something great if he can stay out of jail. That oh, nigga's not though. staying out of jail. We're in our 30s and too old for this nonsense. I have a great job and am working on several entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial opportunities for my future. I am not trying to fix a nigga or nothing like that. Are you sure? You and I think this last situation was finally a wake up call for him. I want to try and make this thing work. But I never dealt with a nigga in jail. Help. Well, you dealt with the nigga in jail because this nigga been to jail about three times in five this email. different times in the email. Yeah, like what the fuck? Girl, I'm going to say I don't even have like this long response. I'm going to say no, d- this is not. I feel like God is really smacking you in the face here saying, look, stop, stop, stop for real. Especially if you've got, if you have a great job and you're going into several different entrepreneurial Bitch, you're about ventures. To steal your credit. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't do it. <laughs> and another thing that I feel like every woman needs to hear. <laughs> I feel like a lot of times you keep staying in situations like that. Yeah, I know you love him, girl. I've been through this situation so many times. But he loved the him. streets. But he loved the streets. He married to the game and he is not going to change. You already said y'all are in your 30s. There is somebody else that is better and for you. You don't have to deal with this nigga that can't learn to not go to jail. Stop or the person who's a potential. Come on, A.M. That. Or just know that the person that's better for you is you at your best self and stop always looking for somebody else to be captain save a hoe or to make you feel complete you can be complete on your own mm-hmm. like you don't have to be with somebody and another thing you need to tune in to we tv on uh, friday nights and watch love after lockup and look at how crazy them girls look because mm-hmm. i love that show but i like it for entertainment purposes if that was my friend on that show i'd be like girl what's going on mm-hmm. we're gonna have to have a sister to sister talk another but, th- but if she I'm, y'all, I don't want to be annoying. No, you're not no, annoying. Go ahead. Go ahead. Be they they probably advocate. really want to hear from you. Me and they can go all day back and forth. Okay. If she want to do that shit, do it. All right. Do right? Because honestly, you should always do what you want to do. You should. That's you what should I always just do what said. You you should. Should. But you what should. I will say is there's a child involved. You said you have a kid. Bitch, you yeah, need to make some yeah, but what but was he going still, to jail for? She didn't even say it. That's oh, how you know shit, it's bad. It's bad. Maybe it's some white way. Stupid. And then keep going back. Maybe he's a petty criminal. But he he gonna keep going back? I mean, I already <laughs> said break up with his ass. But I mean, I and I am in agreement with that. Yeah, I am one hundred percent in agreement with that. But he's but, obviously but it's not, not for me to pay. tell somebody what to do. I feel you. Well, we tell people what to do every I'm week, trying. and they know we not qualified. <laughs> like, I'll like be, this bitch. I was just crying about a nigga. Bitch, I'm about to go home and cry when we leave here. <laughs> I was just crying before I got here. That's why I'm somber. <laughs> Shit. Girl, I just want you to think about your child. Please, let's put yeah, some good think about him models or her in yeah, their lives. Let's Somewhere. put a, yeah, that's real. Sis, he ain't it, sis. He ain't it. There's better, bigger dicks Go hang out, out at the library <laughs> and see who's checking I mean, out books. Yeah, exactly. Little <laughs> Barnes and Noble. Okay, let's move on to the cocktails. So the cocktails are our sexual confession. We told you the cocktail. Did you Have you been thinking and conjuring up your greatest cocktail ever? Yeah. Okay, okay. Do you want to go first or you want us to go first? Y'all can go first. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Yeah. 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 But if you ain't got a buck, I won't cut them. Spend a hundred on me, it ain't nothing. Run a double piece, so stop. Back to the point, is it some cash in this place? If it is, I'll probably see the stats in your face, turn around. Once upon a time, not long ago, I was a hoe, 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 was a hoe, 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 was a hoe. Kiki? I mean, I have one printed. Okay, mine's on my screen. Then people were like, we want OG cocktails from y'all. I said, well, bitch, send me me somebody, send us the dates. 
bitch, we don't have nobody. We're in bereavement right yeah. now. Okay. So um, this one says, rooftop sloppy toppy turns into tumbling down the side of the house. Um, all right. So, hey, babes. Hey girl. My girl and I like to get it popping everywhere that we can. So having rooftop sex isn't uncommon. Mm. I think she mean a real roof, not like the rooftop. Because I'm like saying, is she talking about like a rooftop right. with lights and right. a grill? Or she's actually I don't on know. a roof? I think she means like a roof, like our houses in high school. Wow. But okay. let's see. Let's see. Okay. So one night I was on the rooftop of her house, as I usually am whenever I can't sleep. Okay. It's I don't know. When I can't sleep, stargazing. Out of nowhere, she texts me a freaky pic and a message. I sent a couple of snaps to her phone and told her to come find me. We usually play this game in public, though, or at family functions to spice it up. That's it's our little version. I want to play. It's, a fun game. Right? Fun. it's our little version of hide and go get it. Wow. Ooh, I never played that, but I know what it is one day. Okay. Anyways, it took her about five minutes to find me. And when she did, she didn't utter a word. She kissed me slowly and began removing my clothes. I was like, uh uh-uh. uh. I want to go inside. So when can this woman lay me the fuck down mid sentence and sat on my face? My favorite. I was like, fuck it. And went with the flow. I'm licking and sucking and gripping titties for about 10 to 15 minutes before we switch positions. I was damn near dying because she squirts like a fucking water hose. So a bitch had to get some air. I don't mind dying for the pussy, but I wanted to eat a little more first. Anyways, I flip her on her back so I can really get down to business. And we must have moved toward the damn front of the house somehow because I was damn near hanging <laughs> off the they roof. They were on a real roof. Yeah, wow. real roof. Um, damn near hanging <laughs> off the roof. Said, but I th- roof for my high school days. That's- <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Okay, it's not the high rise roof, you know, with the, the shit. Okay, <laughs> but I thought nothing of it because I've been on her roof before and I was used to being up there. So I thought I knew how much wiggle room I had. Psych, girl, it was midsummer. <laughs> And we live in the country. So I was getting tore up by these ghetto ass mosquitoes. I'm licking and sucking and moaning all in the pussy. And boom, a bitch fell off the roof because she was grinding her pussy in my face. And I was savoring the <laughs> shit while trying to get away from these bugs. I must have made a wrong move, though, because, bitch, I hit the ground hard. That was in all caps. And she was shook as fuck and came running out the front door with our friend. What's your friend? Wait a minute. Where's she Where from? <laughs> Y'all live friend on the was south side. Okay. I thought I was dead, but it only knocked the wind out of me. Psych again. Girl, my damn arm was broken. <laughs> I'm mad. I hope you had health insurance. <laughs> I'm not a quitter, though. So I got up and we had our friend drive me to the hospital so I could finish the job. I'm in the car laying on her lap and I told her to settle up. She said, no, shit. I took my good hand and put it around her neck and started gripping and kissing her. She constantly moans, wait, baby, you hurt. And I'm like, girl, fuck that. I'm trying to fuck. I started playing with the pussy, moaning in it. And before I knew it, I was face deep again. Our friend is low key trying to watch, and I don't give a damn. I'm just glad to be eating. I start because the friend is driving them to the hospital. The friend you. is probably like, "Yo, arm is broke." The friend, wow. she said, the friend was trying to watch. Okay, I start going crazy just because I know she's listening, and my girl is acting shy. So I motion for her to scoot the fuck down so I can eat, eat the pussy. It took a few more licks and a little persuasion. But I finished. My arm is finally healed and the pussy was good as usual. So it was all worth it. I definitely do it again. And we've definitely had rooftop sex since the incident. So if it happens again, I'll let y'all know. Stay black. And she put the emoji like this. Girl. That was a good story. That's the same girl from last week. I don't want. Did did the Medina story? Yes. Wow. She was like, I'm going to sign all my stories saying stay black. So y'all know it's That's the girl you should go out of. Fucking day. She has a whole girlfriend. She oh, said but she that, ready. She said it's open. This is listen, one of the girls that actually wants to go. Is, on a date. This is who you should go on a yeah, date. I mean, you want to go on a date with the most. Hey, hey, she there. said this was an old story. You should story. go on a date oh, with they're her. They're fucking on roofs and breaking arms. No, no. I am not about that life. Yeah, listen, the girl didn't break her arm. Roof. She broke her. Just arm. stay off the roof. Yeah, stay off the roof. Stay that, on the ground. That sounds like it's worth your time. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. It's worth your time. It'll shake the stress off. <laughs> I, I don't know about all that. They got the ghetto, the ghetto mosquitoes. They. It was I'm summertime. Not... They live in the country. They don't even live Kiki, here. You what? Go on a date with her. She didn't ask me for a date. She asked you. She did for real. Yes, that wasn't a joke. I told you this last week. Okay, let's talk about this off here. Okay. Okay. So, 
Here's the next cocktail. Mm. The subject line says, this nigga spit in my eye. Yes. Hey, Kiki. Hey, girl. Hey, Medina. Hey, girl. So I'm going to try and keep this brief. I've been fucking this nigga for maybe like a year or so. It's nothing serious. Never has been. Just friends with benefits kind of thing. Anyway, so I haven't seen him in a while, like maybe five or six months. I was needing some dick, so I hit him up. He came over drunk as usual, face palm. So we kicked it for a while and eventually got to the sexual part. First of all, I should have stopped when we kissed and his beard smelled like a Similac. Oh. <laughs> smelled like Similac. What does that smell like? That's like Nasty. milk, right? Like fake Formula. milk? Okay. And this nigga was fucking eating my whole face. But my horny ass was tired of fucking myself. So I said fucking and kept going. So let's take it back. We had texted a couple days before and he asked me my limits sexually. And I told him I don't have any. Ooh. People don't be knowing what they mean when they say stuff like that, though. Right, because then somebody will pull a hook in your back and you're just and like, you're wait just a minute. Like, <laughs> what the fuck is this? Hold on, there's animals involved. Right, uh, you better say them limits. Mm-hmm. He asked me, could he spit in my mouth? And I said, like, yeah. 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 Okay. Fast forward, the nigga can't. <laughs> <laughs> My face, yeah. all of it. The nigga <laughs> kept spitting it. <laughs> Missing and missing my fucking mouth. Oh, oh face no. bump. Eventually, he went to give me head, which wasn't bad until he started fingering me with his rough ass hands. Y'all, oh my god, that shit hurt so bad. Felt like he was fingering me with a cheese grater. Oh, I ran away. You gonna need some honey oh, pot after this, girl? Oh, I ran away like it was too good, and he eventually <laughs> gave me some dick. The dick I won't complain about, but y'all, this nigga was just spitting. I mean, just spitting. No warning, no nothing. I had to keep wiping my fucking face. Like a water gun of loogies? I had to keep wiping my fucking face. I'm giving him a strong no. Oh, (laughs) and I'm laying next to the no good. Wait. Oh, wait, I skipped a line. Uh, He's spitting in my fucking face. About halfway through, I feel a glob of saliva in my goddamn eye. Y'all, I was pissed. Long story short, next time a nigga asks me, can he spit in my mouth? I'm giving him a strong no. Oh, and I'm laying next to the no good nigga with the good dick I swore I was done with. (laughs) Sorry if it was long, y'all. Love the show. And y'all, bye. Listen. Sorry that happened to you, sister. Somebody spit in my eye before too. It wasn't a consistent, you know, loogie hog. He was like, he missed it once, and I was like, oh, is hailing fucking spit. That was the wrong place, and then he got it. Fucking piss. Sometimes you gotta grab their face and just aim it. Yeah, try that next time because he didn't know what he was doing. Close his fucking mouth, bitch. Yeah, he was just. I think spit is good in 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 circumstances yeah not that one not not that one not that wasn't that was that was not. Could you just imagine you just land? It's just like. Cause you don't know, you like nigga, are you disrespecting me or wh- like you- is, is it sexy to you or do you feel like you're degrading? Me? Like what's going on? What? Yeah, are you really just Let's really talk missing? About your childhood, I'm done with this. But look, I do like you know- I like some spit. Though. I love spit. some spit, but yeah. do you want it coming at your no, face? No, no, I don't. No, I don't. Yeah, I don't. no. I don't. It's either I don't. we're gonna spit in my mouth, yeah. we're gonna slide some around, spitting on private parts, spit in my booty hole. But like spit you can't just places. be missing. Could you imagine if somebody spit on your face and it rolled up your nose? Oh, that's nasty. that's happened to me before, and it was one of the long ones. Like, remember, oh! the, remember the movie Big Daddy where the little that's, boys, oh, <laughs> yes. and he was, yeah, he pulls the back and oh. it was disgusting. He was like hitting it; it was real good. And he was like up above. He was like up above, and he that's a fear did a slow mine. spit, and it went up my nose. <gasps> and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not one to ruin the moment, so I didn't want to be like hey, he's been in my nose. I was just like, bitch, fuck that. He ruined. I'm the drowning in the oh. spit. <laughs> Could you imagine that's how you go out and everyone's like, what happened to this bitch drowning a Luki? Oh. Yeah, what you gonna tell my mom? Now what are you gonna tell my family now that I'm dead? As Beyonce said. What are you gonna tell everyone now that you've killed me? Beyonce said that? In the in the little thing before sorry. She's like, oh, what are you gonna she say? Did. And mm-hmm. I was like, whoa, B. Mm-hmm. No, she that's wouldn't dark. talk about spitting. That's mm-hmm. dark. Okay, what's yours? I'm oh, so ready shit. for this. Um, those were like embarrassing stories. You, t- you most of them embarrassing are. stories. Most of mine are embarrassing. Most of all of mine are embarrassing. I think I gave one romantic uh, one. Let me see. Um. Wow. 
You got it, girl. One time, <laughs> one time, younger, you know, having sex younger. I don't know. It just seems like sex was sex is really good right now. Mm-hmm. But it like just got this good, you know. Um, but when I was younger, you know, young pussy is like amazing pussy, you mm-hmm. know. And um, I wasn't as uh, aware of my body as I am now. Absolutely was not in the feminine care business. And I had this guy that I hope he's not listening. <laughs> I had this guy <laughs> that I was getting busy with. And we were always like so ready for each other because it was just good, you know. Oh, it was good. Yeah. And I didn't realize that I had a yeast infection. Oh, no. And we had, it was like one of those moments and like we were outside his house and we were like in his car. It was like hot and all the things. And then when I got up, it was like all over him. It was all over me. It was so, so, so bad. It was, but it was so good. And it was so good, but it was so bad because it was so. Was he like, what is, I feel like niggas really don't be knowing though. Just no, like, no, oh, there was no way. <laughs> you creeping on the put on a <laughs> Right. Yeah. yeah. They, they, there was no way that you did not know okay. what this was. Um, that was a tough, that was a tough, tough day. I really feel like niggas don't be knowing. One time I had just did like an insert of like <laughs> like some medicine and it wasn't done yet. Mm-hmm. And it was probably for BV. And Nick was like, Dang, you really can't. And I was like, No, uh, I didn't. <laughs> that's, that's the, that's that's the medicine. Not, I, love I love that you were nasty <laughs> enough to be like, Well, Maybe let's just see what happens. That's metronidazole. Like, I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's hard out here being a woman. Yeah, it is. Oh yeah. god. So thank you so much for coming, Beatrice Dixon. Thank you. You are amazing. We're gonna yeah, continue to buy your products. Thank you. I don't know if you want to like plug anything. You're already fucking successful. But like, if you have anything coming up, or if you want people to follow your page, if you want them to go to the website, I'm pretty sure everyone knows who you are. But now would no, be the time no, to like every, plug everybody, it. Everybody Everybody doesn't know who I am. Um, and our website is thehoneypot.co. Um, we are sold nationwide in Target, nationwide in Walmart. Um, we're in Walgreens. We're in some CVSs. Uh, you can pretty much go to our website, go to our store locator, put in your um, zip code and figure out a store near you. Mm-hmm. Um, you can follow us at the Honey Pot Co. <clears throat> you can follow me at I am B Dixon. And B E A D I X O N, um, and yeah, yeah, and and not definitely not everybody knows who I am. So, thank you for anybody that's listening. Thank you for anybody that has supported us through the years. Um, being a black owned business in feminine care is really dope because black women buy feminine care, especially when it's washes. Mm-hmm like 200% more than any other race. And so the fact that we're a black owned business Mm -hmm. and you have that statistic, it just really, really, really is very, you know, we're in, we have a lot of favor, Um, you know, but I have so much gratitude for everybody that has been there and supported us and, seen us through challenges and all the things. So that's so dope. Thank you for creating that. Thank you. Um, I'm going to plug this really quick. Y'all, by the time this episode comes out, it'll be Thursday. Temptation Island also comes out on Thursday. Make sure y'all watch me. Don't judge me because the bitch is acting real crazy. But when I packed for Temptation Island, I made sure I stocked up on my honey pie because <laughs> I wasn't sure what was going to be going down. <laughs> so no, I'm, y'all follow me on Instagram at Coffee Bean Dean. Follow the cocktails page at Cocktails Podcast. And then follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Kiki Said So. And until next week, you guys, goodbye.